<gasps> what a brute! Stay back, Snowdrop! G'day you cheeky dogs, today we're going to be doing a breakdown of the Bluey episode Zoo. We are going to be talking about the Harambe kind of references within this episode as well as like the idea of gorillas and animal cruelty and things like that. As well of course as all the hidden easter eggs and details as well that maybe you might have missed in this episode. My precious little snowdrop just adores animals. Animals, animals! But before we get started, if you love Bluey as much as we do here, don't forget to hit that like button down below, that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know whenever I release any other Bluey themed videos. G'day cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. No, we got a special job for you. <laughs> uh oh. This episode of Bluey is called Sue. So of course, the episode Zoo, all the way back in season one, is about a mother and a child visiting a zoo and then the child getting into the gorilla enclosure and being captured by the gorilla and then like, you know, hilarity ensues basically. No, Dracon's monkey! <laughs> But I know when I watched this, my first thought, of course, was Harambe. Like, even though this was something that happened in America, of course, it, everyone knew about it in Australia. Like, it was massive. It was all over our news as well. Everyone was talking about it. It was all over social media. So I did see on Reddit a lot of people saying that, like, you know, they also thought of Harambe, things like that. And then people commenting, being like, oh, it's that's like an American story. It's nothing to do with Australia. That was a worldwide story, guys. Like, everyone knew about it. It was everywhere. So... Yeah, I think that there were a lot of, like, references to what happened with Harambe in this episode. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, um, um. <laughs> However, I do think there was maybe a bit of a reference as well to Jambo, which is another story about a gorilla and a child and a child getting into its enclosure and what happened. Jumbo, however, of course, had a very happy ending in comparison to Harambe. So if you don't know the story, Jumbo, same thing. A kid fell into the enclosure, hurt themselves quite badly, and then this gorilla protected him. He rubbed his back, he looked after him, he kept the other gorillas away from him the whole time. It was one of the first times actually that people realized that gorillas weren't like, you know, super scary and like King Kong or anything like that. It was a really lovely, heartwarming story. <laughs> you. Uh oh, snowdrop. Uh oh. <laughs> Of course, sadly, on the other count, Harambe was not that story. And it was a super sad ending. And even to this day, people still make TikToks about it all and the fact that, like, this just shouldn't have ever happened. And of course, the episode The Zoo, though, we have a much happier ending. But it's the same situation. A child wants to get in to see the gorilla and sneaks through. And we do notice that throughout the episode, Bluey does refer to Bandit as a baboon, a monkey, and that I think it is Chili who refers to him as a gorilla. Stinky baboon! So they're obviously trying to keep it a little bit vague throughout the whole episode as to what kind of ape he is. But I feel like it's very obviously meant to be like a gorilla. And it's the situation of showing that, yeah, these big animals aren't actually deadly. Sometimes they're just put in bad situations. And we see, of course, Bluey as the zookeeper taking that more aggressive approach with like prodding him with like the red stick as well as like squirting him with the water hose. You could use another word for that and that could be of course a symbolism for what happened with Harambe. It's up to you if you want to see it that way. Don't worry madam, I'll sort this out straight away. Ooh, you be careful with that, won't you? But we do see like this more aggressive take towards an animal when realistically maybe they're just being an animal and they're being curious and things like that. Of course at the very end of the episode we see the zookeeper come to more of an understanding of what's happening with the animal and the child and being able to, you know, create a more calmer situation. Hey, come here, big baboon. <laughs> I think it's up to you. This, it's like I said, it's all over Reddit people thinking this and whether or not you saw these sort of parallels between the stories. I think because it was such a big pop culture kind of thing that happened, I would not be surprised at all that that was sort of their idea with this. Because they could have used any other animal. Bandit could have been an elephant easily, like, and it could have still been the same kind of like hilarity and things that they did with it. But I don't know, they specifically chose a gorilla. So I do feel like there's that kind of vibe to it. Now, this next one is definitely not friendly. He's a big stinky baboon. Ooh, ooh. 
Moving on for that though, let's talk about the actual Australian Easter eggs that we do see in this episode. And of course, we do see quite a few and hear of quite a few Australian animals. The first one, of course, being the kangaroo, which we don't see because it's the padamelon that we actually see instead. For those of you who don't know, a padamelon is like a very small little type of kangaroo. It's super cute and it's also very common to see around Brisbane. And if you follow me this way, you'll see a kangaroo, kangaroo. Well, it's like a kangaroo, young lady, but smaller. It's a paddy melon. Very friendly. We then, of course, also see kookaburras, and there's a whole joke about them laughing because, of course, the sound of a kookaburra sounds like it is laughing. These kookaburras think everything is funny. <laughs> And then at another point, Bluey does like yell out about Chili going to see the emus as well. Everything's okay, madam. Feel free to check out our emus. The other little Australian like reference that I really don't think anyone would notice unless you grew up in Australia was the cookie that Bingo offered to Bandit when they were in the cupboard. That is like a very Australian cookie. It's on its hundreds and thousands one. And I realize that these are cookies that like you see everywhere, but specifically in Australia, like that was my first thought. Like I knew that cookie specifically because it's like a childhood one that you always have at parties. As for our ongoing Easter eggs, we did have two tennis balls and one long dog in this episode as well. We see an actual tennis ball on the ground in like that patio living room that they have when Bluey comes in with her little peddly car. And then we see another one on the staircase as well in the photo frame. As for the long dog, it is in the downstairs playroom. We see like just one off shot of it when they are like coming in and it's on like the little bench where they play. Not surprisingly, Southeast Asia Disney had a lot of censorship in this episode as well. There were three different scenes that were actually cut from this. The first one is when they say, big stinky baboon that was cut from it he's a big stinky baboon as well as bluey's telling him to saying like oi get up stop moving around that scene was cut oi get up you big ape our visitors don't want to see you lying around all day and then the final scene that was cut was when bluey was like prodding bandit with that red pool noodle as well that was completely cut out of the southeast asian version <laughs> the lady, you lazy ape. <laughs> As to some other little hidden details that maybe you might have missed, the first one was the rainbow yarn that we found out that Chili was on like a quest to find all the way in season three in Curry Quest. I wish there was a rainbow colored yarn. Oh, tell me about it. I'm on a quest to find rainbow yarn. But here, they, they obviously have rainbow yarn. It exists. So it was always like a funny little nod when that came up that Chili said like she was trying to look for it when they already have some. The second little detail is right at the very start when Bluey and Bingo come into the lounge room to tell mum and dad what roles they're going to be. If you zoom in, you see Bingo starting to copy what Bluey's doing. And it's just such a cute little detail that the animators didn't need to do. But it's these little details that they do to make it just seem so much more lifelike. And I just thought that was so cute. The last little detail is an error that we have seen and it's popped up a few times but it's with the beds normally Bluey's bed has the big B on it and Bingo's has the little B but when we're just looking at Bingo's bed she has the big B on her bed and this is an error that's popped up a few times the last little thing of course I want to talk about is like who is the neighbor's yard that they are setting up this zoo in because it is not Pat's yard because he is behind our house. It's not Wendy and Judo's because they are on the other side of the house. And it's not Doreen's because she is like two houses down from them. So this is like a mystery neighbor that obviously they're close with because they can just like jump in and out of their yard. But we've never met this neighbor and maybe we never will. But I kind of hope that maybe they're just like someone who goes on holidays a lot or maybe like it's a close friend. Or I did see someone think that like maybe this is also another part of the Healer's house and they use it as an Airbnb. There's a little like fun little theories with that. But yeah, this is a random neighbor who we have never met, but is obviously close with the healers. <laughs> For me, this episode is maybe a three out of five lawn dogs. I liked the really fun shenanigans in this episode. I liked the sort of Flintstones nod with like Bluey chasing them around in her little peddly car. And I also really love the dynamic between Bluey and Chili that I feel like we don't always get to see a lot of, but their dynamic is always really, really funny. Would you like to see our reptile section? No! Snowdrop! Would you like to visit our gift shop? 
So overall, I think a really sweet episode and a really good one about how we should treat animals and our interactions, especially with big wild animals and how we think about them. But cheeky dogs, let me know in that comment section down below, how many long dogs would you give this episode out of five and what did you think of it overall? While you're down there as well, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button and bell for notifications so you know whenever I release any other Bluey videos. But until then, I have picked your cheeky dogs out, a few other videos that maybe you'd like to watch and I will see you all in another video. Mwah! Bye!